But here's what you can expect. As I said earlier, I'll be doing a presentation. I'll also be doing a giveaway after my presentation, and then you'll have an opportunity to ask me any questions you might have. Now, I do need you to make a promise to me today. Um, you joined me for the session. You took the time out of your day um, to ensure that you get the most out of this. I ask that you just try to reduce any distractions around you. Um, questions are a good thing. So if you have any questions, pop them in the chat box. I can see them as they pop up and I'll answer them at the end of the session. I've also provided a workbook that you can use and the workbook is linked below the video in the description. And that workbook is something I want you to download and take with you because it will allow you to implement a lot of what you learned today. Now, of course, the most important thing, this actually doesn't work if you don't take action. So I can give you everything I know about building a successful business, but if you're actually not implementing any of it, it doesn't work. So if you can promise me that you will take action on this, I promise you that you will see the results in your business. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with me, I'm Jodi Ann Rowe, and I'm the founder of the Event Certificate. And I'm here because I like helping event planners crush it in their business, as I was able to. And I know what it felt like when I started my business on the side and how much work went into trying to get it to where it got to, right? The where I was able to feel comfortable making the money and helping the clients that I was able to do. So my mission really is to help you run a business that does more than help you get by, right? My goal is to help you run a business that is profitable and satisfying so that you can spend time doing the things you love with the people that you love. Now, a little bit about my background. I'm an event planner. I've been planning events for over, oh my God, guys, I'm aging myself. I've been planning events informally from the age of 14 and that's been 20 years. And more formally, I've been planning events for about 14 years now. I worked as a corporate events planner at a university and I also have an event planning business that I run on my own. I am a lifetime side hustler, as I know some of you might be as well. And hands up if you are, I like the hustle. Um, I've also started six businesses from the age of 18 to today. I'm someone that I do like having a project. I do like working on things I enjoy. Now, not a lot of those businesses were successful, and that's why I learned a lot of what I'm able to share with you today because of those failures. I'm also a little bit addicted to traveling. So you can see that photo on the screen. That's me in Paris. If you have your favorite travel locations and want to send me some recommendations, do send them. I love that. Now, I'm gonna show you, this is a screenshot from one of my first businesses. This is the business called FormWiz that I actually started, um, oh my God, guys, this was in the early 2000s. But this business, I worked with small business owners to convert their form, like order forms that they had that customers had to print out. I helped them to convert that into interactive PDFs. So something you could fill out online and automatically submit. And this was in the earlier days of the internet, so no judgment, but I just wanted to show you where I've come from, right? This is not what the event certificate website looks like today, but I learned a lot from these experiences. Now, for those of you who need it, I wanna give you the icing on the cake, and that's more my formal education. So I have an honors BA in economics, and what that means is that I really can't add one plus one, but I'm really good in algebra statistics and I love analytics, which is helpful to you because I know some of you who have worked with me one on one know that one of the first things I ask when you say that you're not finding clients, I'll ask you, are you getting traffic to your website? What does your Google Analytics look like? These are the reasons why this excites me. I love those numbers. I also have a graduate diploma in event management. I have a master's degree in education. And that was a passion degree, right? When I started teaching, I really wanted to ensure that I was able to present information in a way that adult learners like myself could actually enjoy it. So this was one I did because I wanted to. Now today is International Women's Day. So of course, thank you for joining me. I know most event planners are female. So I wanna say to you, happy International Women's Day. It's a great time to be a woman right now, believe me. And it's a great time to be a female entrepreneur because women entrepreneurs 
women make better entrepreneurs. Like, let's be honest. And I might be a little biased. And if there's any guys on the line, I apologize. Nothing against your gender, but women make better entrepreneurs. Women are socialized to be more caring, more nurturing. And therefore, in today's market, where marketing isn't just about throwing ads in everyone's face and being pushy, this really helps because it's more about connecting with your customers. And that's something that women entrepreneurs are able to do well. Now, the statistics are there to prove you right, right? Women owned businesses have really grown 58% between 2007 and 2018. And if you're a woman of color, that number was 164%. So it's a great space to be owning an event planning business. And it's a great space if you're a female entrepreneur that owns that business. Now, it all really comes down to learning how to sprinkle your magic once you own that business. And that's what I'm hoping to share with you today, because you can have everything going good for you but if you're not marking your business well chances are you might be struggling so here's the biggest thing that i hear from a lot of my customers they're saying i'm not booking any clients jody ann how can i book more clients what's going on right and you're just wondering why everything you're doing is not working well I'm here to share with you some of the issues you face, why and how to fix it. Now, here's the truth. You can be the best event planner or event designer in the industry, but if no one knows about your service, then you have no sales, right? If no one knows about you, they won't be able to hire you. And this is where marketing is important. Right. And marketing, as we know it, because I know traditionally marketing has some there's some stereotypes around it. But I'm here to tell you that marketing your business, it doesn't have to be scary or difficult or scammy. It's really all about just understanding human psychology. Now, the problem that event planners tend to face when they start their business is that and th this is what a lot of the scenarios look like when I meet clients that I work with one on one and they're usually telling me that they can't get hired. So they've started their business. They're really excited about starting their business, but they actually have no experience with effective, authentic results driven marketing. So because of that, it doesn't work, right? You start the business, you know that you're amazing at what you do, but no one is booking you. So what happens then is that they start feeling frustrated, right? You start feeling frustrated. You feel like you failed somehow. And then at this point, sometimes you just want to throw your hands up and throw in the towel and give up, right? Because right now it just seems easier to go and work for someone else who's giving you a paycheck week after week or month after month, right? But here's some tough love. Because in business, nothing happens without a sale. No matter how amazing your product is, if you're not attracting people to your business, if you're not building trust with them, and if you're not turning them into happy paying customers, you're basically finished. That That's the honest truth, guys. And this is all because you just need to learn the marketing piece, right? That's all you need to solve this problem, how to market effectively. And it's something that anyone can learn because here's the other thing when you have a service that you believe in it is your responsibility to get it in front of the people that you serve right it's your responsibility and i'm not trying to be disrespectful but if you're committed to running a profitable event planning business and you don't know how to market that business effectively you're essentially stealing from customers who would benefit from having your service. And there are hundreds of people out there who want the service that you provide. Like I can tell you, I am an event planner. And if I'm supposed to get married right now, I would not plan my wedding myself. I would be hiring someone to do it. And there are countless other people like myself who are willing to pay for your service. And that's just because they want what you're providing. But guess what? It's not their job to find you. It is your job as the event planner to find them. And if you want to get hired, if you really want to step up 
and be a leader in the event planning industry, you have to learn how to market in today, right? You have to learn modern marketing. And this is not about like your grandparents type of marketing with ads in the newspaper, right? And I know there's a bunch of people that will always say modern marketing or digital marketing doesn't work for event planners. Well, let me tell you, first of all, that's wrong, but I'm going to show you why. Marketing today is really about building trust. It's, and it's about giving and showing that you genuinely care so that the booking process for your customers just happens naturally because they just make the right decision for themselves without feeling that like they were forced into that. That's what marketing today is, right? It's not about just throwing up a coupon on your website and saying, we're giving you 20% off this month. It's about building trust, giving, and showing that you genuinely care. Here's what marketing isn't, because this is what I find a lot of event planners do who are struggling to get booked. They think that marketing is all about putting up a Facebook business page and adding some pretty pictures to Instagram. This is not marketing, guys. This is not marketing. Now, when you start to take your business seriously and you start focusing on what you give versus what you can get, it makes a huge difference in how successful your marketing is. I'm going to repeat that one. When you start taking your business seriously and when you start focusing on what you can give versus what you can get, so when you start really looking at what your customers' issues are, how you can fix it, start providing them with some value without thinking about the money immediately, it helps them to naturally take out that credit card because guess what? They trust you. Right. And that's how you become successful in marketing. And you, you already know how to market. If you're alive and breathing in 2019, you know how to market. And a lot of people say, no, they don't believe me. If, if you enjoy helping your families and friends plan parties and anniversaries and their weddings, any event, you know how to market. And if you're offering them recommendations on venues and where they can purchase supplies for their events, and if you're giving them tips on the products that you think would work best, you are marketing. This is an example of what marketing in your business should be looking like today, right? This is modern marketing. Now, here's why your marketing is probably not working. There are six components that you need to have in your marketing plan for it to be effective, right? There are six components. And just think of them as a link, right? A chain link. So if any one of the links are missing, the chain is broken. And that's why it doesn't work. So the first one that you need to have is confidence. And I'm telling you, if you don't have this first one, this training is not going to be helping you right? You need to be confident. You need to have the courage to put yourself out there to push forward what you have in your business, right? Your service. And if you don't have this, then customers are probably not going to feel like they're not going to feel confident in what you're providing. And if they don't feel confident about what you're providing, they're not going to hire you. The next one is clarity. And clarity is about knowing the service that you provide who your ideal clients are that you provide it to, and the benefit that that provides to your ideal client, right? So the benefit that your service provides. Number three is connection. And that connection is between you and your customers. So that connection is about building trust, right? Giving, ensuring that they feel like you're adding some value so that they want to hire you. Number four is content. And that's the information you're pushing out on your website, on social media. All of that is the content that you share. And this content is what helps you to market, to build a connection with your customers. And it's usually influenced if you have clarity on what you're providing. Number five is consistency. And this is a big one because I meet a lot of people who are real, they really struggle with this, right? And I'll give you an example. Consistency is about ensuring that you're doing the same thing, right? Over and over, not just giving up. So I'll meet event planners and they'll say, they'll say, what's the best way to market my event planning business? And one of the things I hesitate to do is I hesitate to tell you the best way without looking at your business because 
for example, if you know me, you know that I absolutely love Facebook ads. I think they're amazing and they work really well. However, if I tell you to run a Facebook ad and your messaging, the clarity piece is broken, it's not going to work, right? So consistency, when I see it missing, it's usually someone that they, they'll run a Facebook ad, they spend some money on it, it didn't work, they throw their hands up and they say, I'm finished, right? That's not being consistent because what they haven't done is they haven't actually stepped back, looked at what went wrong in the ad, looked at the analytics and tried to fix anything. So I will say to them, okay, the ad didn't work. Okay, what was your ROI? What was your cost per click, right? And they'll say, oh, I don't know. Now, if you're being consistent, you would know those numbers because you would have went back and said, this didn't work. What's wrong? What's broken? And if you didn't do that, you can't expect to have a fully functioning marketing plan, right? Your marketing strategy is going to be all out of whack. The final one is conversion. And conversion is basically what happens when everything in that chain is working, right? Conversion is the sale, the signature on the contract, them telling you, okay, I want to pay that deposit, right? The conversion is what happens when everything is working. Now, I'm going to focus on more or less three parts of the marketing plan because this is the area that's always broken when clients are not hiring you or you're not getting any traction the clarity, the connection, and the content piece. And the clarity piece actually informs the connection and content, right? When you know what your service is and how well it is and how it helps and who it's supposed to help, the connection and content just falls into place. So the missing link, the number one reason why clients are not hiring you is usually because you have no clarity in your business. You have an idea of what you do, right? You know you're an event planner, you know you plan events, you know you're amazing, but you're not articulating that well. And that's usually the problem. And if you're not speaking your customer's language, they're not going to be booking you. Now, I want to share a downloadable with you. And it's 147 websites to list your event planning business. I also linked it below the video in the notes. Now, if you want to go ahead and download that before the end of the session, do so or at the end, because it's a great way to get traffic to your business. Now, the other thing is it's a great way to get traffic, but it only works when you fix the clarity piece, right? So if you have the clarity piece clear, just go ahead and download it. Now, clarity is about knowing your ideal client, understanding why people buy, right? So that, that, the psychology behind why people will purchase something and being able to talk about what you do clearly. So usually when event planners are struggling to find clients, one of the things they think is a solution is that if I'm not getting anyone to hire me, maybe I am not getting in front of enough people. So I need to just market to everyone, right? And this is wrong. This is completely wrong because in fact, to find more clients, you need to stop selling to everyone. That's one of the biggest things you can fix right there. To find more clients, you need to stop marketing to everyone because not everyone is your customer. And when you know who your customers are, it really is helpful. And here's why. When you know exactly who your customers are, it helps you to understand who you would like to market to. It helps you to know exactly what to say to them. Your website, your social media, your SEO, getting booked all falls into place when your marketing is on point. Now, I've said a couple of words, most uh, like ideal clients, and I know that you've probably heard all the little buzzword, target market, ideal clients, client avatar, and Sometimes we get wrapped up in this ter in these terms. So I'm going to quickly touch on them because I don't want you to, right? These terms are not what should be blocking you. So your target market, and I want you to think of it like a pool. Your target market is essentially everyone in the pool that would want your service, right? So if you're a wedding planner and you're in the pool, it's everyone that's planning a wedding or have a wedding that's coming up. Your ideal client now, let's say that you only work with customers with a budget over $10,000.
your ideal client is now going to be only a section of that pool because your ideal client is only going to now be people in the pool who have an upcoming wedding whose budget is over ten thousand dollars and your client avatar your client avatar is basically your ideal client but in real life and i've used the photo of mindy kalen here for anyone who's familiar with her i absolutely love her but this is just helping you put a face to what your client looks like. And the reason why we suggest doing that, or a lot of marketers suggest doing that, is that it helps you to visualize who you're talking to so that when you write content for your website, when you're writing your posts on Instagram, you understand who would be interested in that post, right? So now that I've covered those terms, I don't want you to get hung up on them. They're really not that important. Just understand them and move on. The thing that you need to just really focus on is your ideal client and what that means for your business and that not everyone will be a potential client. Listen, guys, you're not a jar of Nutella. You're not going to make everybody happy, but your ideal clients will be happy to work with you. I want to do a little exercise to help you understand a little bit more of what I'm trying to say. So. I want you to, if you have a pen and paper handy, I actually want you to draw a vase, right? So take the time and just draw a vase. And you know what a vase looks like. Um, this is actually an exercise I do a lot in class with my students in person. So draw a vase. Or if you don't have pen and paper, I want you to think about that vase. Think about what it would look like. Now I'm going to show you what I usually get back from my students. So here's what I usually see, right? They'll draw something like this. And guys, this is not a right or wrong answer. This is what it look, a vase looks like. And sometimes you'll see they'll add a flower or it will be empty, right? More or less is what it looks like. The next thing I want you to do though, is I want you to draw a way that people can enjoy flowers. Right. So draw a way that people can enjoy flowers. And again, if you don't have a pen and paper, do it mentally. If you do, just scribble something down and see what you come up with. Now, guys, I'm going to, of course, share with you what I usually get back. So this is what I usually see from my students. So instead of the vase, what I'll get from them is I'll now get a potted plant. I'll get planters on a windowsill. I'll get a garden, right? All of a sudden, the options available have expanded, right? Now, here's what it all comes down to. Here's the point of that exercise. It all comes down to this. It's not really about what you're selling. It's not really about just your event planning services. It also comes down to how you position it and how you package it. Now, if you see from that exercise, when I gave you a limitation and I focused only on the vase, it limited how much you were able to, how you were able to think outside of that box, right? But when I opened the box, it really allowed you to expand how you saw it. And that's what you should be doing when you're marketing, right? You, it's all about how you package that product and how you position it. Now, I'm going to tell you the story of the ugly pie, right? <laughs> and this, this includes my mom, love her to death. But my mom is an amazing baker. She does amazing things when you put her in that kitchen, something that her daughter did not inherit. But while her food is amazing, and she makes a lot of good stuff. Like she makes a Jamaican rum cake that is to die for. She is not all about the looks. So she'll make something like this, right? And it tastes amazing, but it does not look appealing. Now, here's the thing. Her daughter, me, Jodi Ann, is a visual eater, which means that before I eat something, it has to look pretty to me visually. I'm not someone like my brother who'll just dig right in because it's food. Now, if... This is something that you are going to sell, right? If you know that you're amazing at baking, right? But your presentation is not the best, but you decide to sell, sell your pie anyways. This is why people usually struggle. Now, if your ideal client is like me, who really enjoy the visual part of eating before I even dig in, 
chances are I'm going to walk past you and walk past this pie without stopping to try to even purchase it. Now, this is the problem when you're not understanding who your ideal clients are, but you're still marketing and pushing a product that you know is good. So you know it's amazing. You're pushing it out there, but nobody's connecting with you because your ideal client is like Jodi Ann and she needs to see that pretty pie that she can take a photo of and post on Instagram so her friends can see it. So this is just an example of what happens when you don't understand your customers so your marketing cannot improve. But you can fix that when you actually fix your marketing. So I'm going to get practical for a minute and show you how to do that. Now, I'll take the example of a wedding planner because I know most of you right now are wedding planners. You do plan a lot of weddings. If you're corporate, just send me a message. I'll give you a good example as well. So if you're a wedding planner, it's important for you to understand what your clients go through before they get to the hiring stage or what potential brides usually go through before they actually get to the end of the wedding if they decide not to hire you. So there are five emotions. I've researched this, believe me, there are five emotions that, that a bride goes through when they're planning a wedding on their own. The first is joy, right? They're excited because they just got engaged. They're in that happy phase. They're showing everyone their engagement ring. They're telling everyone about it. They're changing their Facebook status. Another reason why you need to be marketed on social media, guys. They're updating their Facebook status. They're posting it all over social media. Now, the next step that happens is shock because they're not event planners. So then all of a sudden, the reality of having to plan a wedding, for example, for 400 people, hits them in the face and they, they, they're they a little surprised, right? So they enter the shock mode. The next thing that happened is stress because they start planning the wedding and of course, because they're not event planners, they start getting overwhelmed by the amount of pieces that are moving for this one event that they weren't aware of. So it starts to stress you out. Then you start to get a little bit annoyed. You start The annoyance starts to set in because you're stressed out. You're dealing with multiple people, multiple vendors. And then you have family members calling you to ask if they can change the color of their dress and they're in the bridal party. Or you have people calling because they want you to put them at a specific table so that they can be very close to the door, right? They're just annoying you. They're focused on themselves rather than on you. And this starts to get annoying. The final stage that happens is a worried kind of panic. This is when they get to the end Everything is more or less set up, but because they're not confident, because they're not a wedding planner, they start to get worried and panic a little bit. You know, did I, did I set everything up or is everything booked? I need to call everyone and confirm again. And this is also where I find a lot of brides will start looking for a day of coordinator. Now, if you understand all of these emotions and you understand what your client is going through, believe me. Your marketing and the stuff you're posting on social media that's effective becomes very different. So here's an example. Now, I find that a lot of event planners use a lot of shortcut words in their marketing. And shortcut words are basically these words that says everything but means nothing. So it will say something like, uh, book me now to save time, book me now to save stress, less stress, like all those little shortcut work, they're not very specific, right? And the thing with shortcut words is that they make an assumption that your client knows event planning, right? They make an assumption that that bride fully understands how you're saving her time when she hires you. And keep in mind, she doesn't. She's not an event planner. She's never planned a wedding. So you need to identify to her the exact problem that you're going to be solving. So instead of saying something like, I'll help you look at venues and select vendors, you want to say something a little bit more specific. So you want to say to her, listen, Jody, there's no more second guessing every decision about floral arrangements and the venue that's best for your event when you hire me. Because one of the things that I do is that I work for my clients so that the only decision that you will be making is saying yes or no, because I'll be taking care of everything else. Now, I don't know if you could hear the difference in those two statements, right? One is kind of vague. 
the other one is speaking to the client because they understand that they're in they're stressed out they're not fully understanding the whole event planning process and you're telling them how you can fix it now here's an example outside of the industry right i'm taking a step back so that you can see what it looks like outside now a lot of people myself included because i'm in my 30s guys are a little obsessed now with skincare i am now if i'm walking and i see a statement that says feel younger again this might not mean much to me i might it might pique my interest a little bit but chances are i'll still walking i'm a busy person i have lots to do and this doesn't mean anything now if i see something that says and there's a sign and it says look 10 years younger in just three weeks using this little known balinese technique it's weird but it works immediately you have my attention because you've told me exactly the result that you're going to be providing right i'm going to look 10 years younger you've given me a timeline for doing that in just three weeks and you're giving me a hint of what technique you're using but not completely so you've you've left a little bit of intrigue so i actually need to stop to find out more this right here guys is the perfect example of how you should be marketing this is what your captions on social media what your instagram captions your facebook posts all of those things should be looking like right these are the things that gets you dms that gets customer asking can i book you what do you do not when you just post a pretty picture and say congratulations to john and sandy on their wedding that's not what's getting you the bookings now i'm going to give you real world example that I've actually went out and pull so you can see what I'm talking about. The first example I'm going to start with is your websites because this is where I see a lot of people struggling and I'll show you why it doesn't work. So this is an, a website. I don't know who this person is, but it's an event planning website. I did a quick Google search and found this. Now, the removing the aesthetics from um, the discussion, you'll see that immediately the first thing on the page is a big photo that while the photo is nice, one of the things I recommend is ensuring that there's people in your photo. So when you're trying to sell to a person, you need them to be able to see themselves in your marketing. And when I look just at a picture of flowers, I don't see that. So you can end right there. On top of that, she says, we take the stress out of wedding planning. Now, Stress out of wedding planning, other shortcut words that I don't want you to be using because it's not effective. Because taking the stress out of wedding planning doesn't mean anything to a new bride if they're in the joy phase of planning the wedding and the shock phase, because they actually haven't started the process of planning that wedding yet to understand how stressful it's going to be. Right. And this is why it's important to know who your clients are, know where they're at understand the emotions that they're experiencing and be able to speak to that now i'm going to give you an example using someone from that i've actually worked with and this is from michaela michaela is in our facebook group she's someone i've worked with one-on-one -on -one. and one of the things i recommended for her website was to add a free downloadable right as i said you need to give clients value so that they can feel like they trust you and it makes it easier to get hired so she put it up and you'll see her downloadable. It says, you're engaged AF. I won't say what AF means to, to offend anyone. Now what? She gets, she says, get my, get my five tips on what to do after you get engaged. The wedding planning process can be stressful. Let me be your fairy godmother. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm newly engaged, I'm probably also, I'm thinking, okay, now I'm engaged, this is great, I'm all excited, but now what do I do? So I'm gonna enter this. There's not, there's no price, I just gotta enter my email address and I'll get it. Now, this is an example of also knowing exactly who your ideal clients are. Look at the language that she used, because I promise you, if I put my mom right now in front of the screen, she does not know what AF means. But if you put a younger millennial bride in front of the screen, she knows what that is, right? So it's about writing your content in a way that speaks to your customers. Now, here's another example. And Rachel did us, she does an amazing job of this. Now, I'll see a lot of websites because I talk with a lot of you, I work with a lot of you, and I'll see where you say, 
you know, you started your event planning business or you started your wedding planning business after you planned your own event. And this is great, but I'm telling you, when you put that on your website, it doesn't work. It doesn't sell your services because in fact, when I think of it, when I look at that wording, all I think is, so you've planned one event and suddenly you've decided to become an expert. Now I'm losing a little bit of confidence because I'm going to go with somebody. Chances are that's done more than just their wedding and who's actually been an expert in the field. Now, Rachel actually did put that. That's how she got started. But look, I want you to pay attention to the difference in how she worded it. She really connected to the customer's emotion. She said, the idea for whatever is lovely started years ago during my own wedding in 2012. My mother and I put on the entire wedding for almost 400 people ourselves. Linens, floral arrangements, invitations, coordinating the day, we handled it all. And while it was an amazing day that I will always cherish and remember, one memory I can't seem to shake is that I have no pictures of my mother zipping me into my dress. I have no memories of our families mingling together, relaxing and enjoying the entire day. Since they were all going above and beyond to help create and put together my perfect day. It was then that I realized no bride should have to experience the same. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am telling you that if you're not in the situation when you're writing that you've planned one event, like your own wedding, and you decide to become a wedding planner, you need to go to your website and you need to be rewriting the content. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is social media, because as I said, I want you to think about how everything I'm sharing is impacting your business. Look at everything I share. Look at what you're doing in your business and go ahead and implement it. So I'll give you an example of what I see sometimes when I scroll through. And I know I follow a couple of you on social media and I want you to see what it looks like if I was booking, if I'm an ideal client. So this person posted and they said, so you want to get engaged, learn all about how to choose a diamond ring. And by the way, this is an event planner. Now, if you knew your customers, you would know that at the point where they're looking to hire a wedding planner, it is not when they're looking for a ring. So this post is an example of not knowing who your ideal clients are. So if you keep posting content like this, and all, and I am a potential bride, right? I just got engaged. Chances are, I'm just gonna keep scrolling because this doesn't speak to me. This doesn't say anything about you, your service. It doesn't say anything about how you can assist me. It's talking about choosing a diamond ring. And guess what? That's already been done by my fiance and it's on my finger. So this does not apply. Now I'll give you an example of how you can be a little bit more engaging, right? This is an example of how it's done well, right? And this is Maisha, who um, is in our Facebook group and someone who I, I really enjoy her content, right? And the first, she posted a photo of the cutest little baby just relaxing, relaxing in the pool. Now, her caption says, first, I love this picture. Okay, what I wanna say is, if you're lucky enough to be a summer baby or have a summer baby, it's time to start thinking about celebrating. So she posted this a couple months before the summer started, just to say, don't wait until the last minute and DIY, call us, we can help. Here's the thing when you're posting on social media is that you need to grab people's attention. This photo grabbed my attention immediately. And as you can see, it got a couple of likes and I grabbed this, I screenshotted her social media very early. So it probably ended up with way more likes than this. This is an example of how you connect when you know who your customers are. So you know the summer is coming up. You know that if, you're, if you have a baby, chances are the photo of a cute baby is gonna get you to stop, right? That's just a fact. It got me to stop and I don't have kids. But I'm just telling you, you need to ensure that you think not only about the text, but also the image. Now, here's another example. And this one's actually looking a little blurry. But here's another example. Guys, I might have to skip over this one because it's looking a little blurry on my screen. So I don't know if it shows for you. But this 
is from Jenna Kutcher. And if you don't follow Jenna on Instagram, go ahead and do that right now because she does a really good job of sharing a little bit about her business behind her life, but she does a really good job of the captioning. Now, here in this photo, she also is a wedding photographer. So she posted a photo from one of her clients and then she said, yesterday was the last wedding of my wedding season. It's so wild to think that six years ago, I was just a girl in an office yearning to leave the corporate, the corporate world. Now, I want you to actually find this post. Go ahead and read it because Jenna, I find, does a great job of not just focusing on the sale, right? So in this image, in this post, she's not even talking about booking her. She's just posted an image from her work. She's posted about what her work means to her and how she got there. And let me tell you, she has publicly said she's gotten so many bookings as a result of posts like this. Because what she's done is she's opened up herself a bit. She's talking about how she came to be a wedding photographer, how amazing it feels to be working with clients. And you, if you are looking for a wedding photographer, will probably feel like, Oh my God, I understand where she's coming from. I would love to have somebody who is this heart centered to help me capture all the images from my wedding. Now, I want you to test it out. So I've thrown a lot of information at you. I've told you all the things that you should be doing, shouldn't be doing in terms of your content on your website, on your social media. Because believe me, guys, those are the reasons why clients are not really connecting with your message. And that's where your marketing is broken. But I want you to test it. So one of the first things I want you to do is I want you to write up a little summary. It's going to be three sentences total, a little summary. And here are the things I want you to include first and foremost, who you are and what you do. So who you are, what you do, full stop. Then I want you to write why you do it, full stop. And then I want you to write a tagline, right? So the third sentence will be your tagline. And that tagline, I don't want it to be something just fun and fuzzy, right? So I don't want it to be saying something like, I'm the flowers whiz or I'm the venue selecting expert. No, that tagline needs to tell me the problem that you solve. So right there, I, I want this, this exercise is really going to help you to get into the mindset of how you should be crafting content to get people to see it. Now, I'll give you an example using myself. So I've written mine and I said, I'm Jodi Ann and I help event planners book more clients, right? That's what I do. And the reason I do it is so that they can increase their revenue, double their profit and design a life that they want. And what's my tagline? Well, I'm the girl you call when you're ready to grow your event planning business. So I want you to practice this. I want you to actually take the time and write it out. And it's not going to be perfect on the first try. And even if it isn't, take the time and reword it, recraft it. And when you're done, I want you to actually post this as an introduction, whether in our private Facebook group or on Instagram. You can post it on your Instagram account with a photo of yourself as an introduction and tag me in it. Just tag me below so I can see what you did. And I'm at Jodi Ann Rowe on Instagram. So I want you to do this. This is going to be one of the first examples of how you can just put yourself so that people understand what you do and your messaging is clear, right? That clarity piece. So guys, I'm actually going to wrap it up, but I'm going to give you some homework to take with you. So what I want you to do is I want you to actually go ahead and download the workbook that is linked below the video. Download it because this will help you with the homework. Then I want you to actually go through the workbook, complete the exercises within it. And then I want you to take the time over the next five days to review your website, review your social media and all your marketing materials, everything that you use to sell your business and your services. And I want you to look for the shortcut words in your marketing and take them out. Any shortcut word. So if you just have a vague thing on the front of your page that says, book me to save stress, take it, think about how you can reward that using everything I've just said earlier. So again, the workbook includes 
two items that I really want you to pay attention to. It includes the red velvet rope policy, which is basically just your terms about the type of customers that you want to work with, what they look like, and the non-negotiables for working with you. There's also the ideal client communication template where I help you to get to the point where you know exactly what to say and how to say to customers to get them to want to hire you. So these are two important templates. But I'm going to give you something else. This is a bonus homework because it's important to understand where you are now in your business. I want you to take the time and Google your name any time within the next five days. And if you can do it today, do it today. I want you to just enter your name in Google. And if your website and any of your social media accounts is not within the top 10 search results, your marketing link has a problem. So again, Google your name. Do it today if you can, but do not pass five days. And if your website and at least one of your social media accounts is not within the top 10 results, you have a broken system, right? Your marketing strategy is not working. Because if it's working, Google will be ranking you higher. And if it's not working, I want you to actually send me an email. Just send me an email. Let me know what that number is. And if you're in the Facebook group, pop it in the group. Let me know. So guys, believe it or not, that's most of what I have to share with you on everything.